Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at weather for the next week's 10 days. For today's video, uh, that's going to take us around the 23rd of, uh, of May. Uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and ECM ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at the CFSB2 uh, for the next month as well. So we've got complex weather patterns coming up in uh, the next few days. High pressure is going to be dominating until the end of this week. Uh, so it's going to be lots of dry, fine, warm, sunny conditions until around Thursday. And we're going to start to pick up more of an easterly wind. And at the weekend, it looks like low pressure is going to start trundling up from the south. But that's very complex how that's going to happen and how much precipitation that's going to bring with it. So uh, it may bring some heavy rain, possibly thunder even, thundery rain um, from the south. But uh, we need to wait a day or two to firm up on that. And then beyond that, we'll uh, see what the uh, model output is forecasting to happen as we look ahead into uh, next week. So we'll get on with it and we'll start off with the uh, 500 millibar high to flow flowcharts from the Penn State University today. We've got the uh, ECMWF here on the top and the GFS, which have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibars is an area in the atmosphere high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Ray extrapolates high pressure blue to low pressure. You can see what the ECMWF is doing in the 7 to 10 day time frame. It's going to take us around the 23rd of May. We have above average heights sitting to our north. So we've got blocking to our north with low pressure to the west and to the south of us. So we would be feeding in sort of an easterly wind uh, with that, possibly northeasterly. It's this low pressure down here that's causing a lot of the uncertainty. So it's a trough um, within the 500 millibar flow over Spain and Portugal, which is quite unusual uh, for uh, the second half of May. Normally, it's a time of year when things are settling down through Iberia and the Mediterranean. Uh, so we've got low pressure down there, and it's how far north was that low pressure is going to push, where it's going to bring up its heavy showers, uh, perhaps more, more prolonged spells of rain, and possibly thunder uh, from the south. If it does, then it'll be more southern parts of the country, but are in the firing line uh, for that. You notice that the GFS is a lot further north in that trough of low pressure. So again, um, we've got the uh, blocking signal sitting up to our north. So there's a large area of high pressure to our north. A little bit more centred towards Greenland, I suppose, compared to the uh, ECMDF. Yeah, but it's sort of in the same uh, sort of the same idea. The average heights covering not only Spain, Portugal, but also France uh, and the central part of Mediterranean as well. There's more low pressure in the Atlantic too. Uh, so again, you, just how far north that uh, that trough of low pressure is going to get. Uh, we will be bringing in, or we will be bringing in an east to northeast city wind with that, I think. So it's probably a rather cooler solution compared to the ECMWF in the week to 10 day time frame. Driest weather obviously is in the north, closest to the ridge of high pressure with the threat anyway of heavy showers or longer spells of thundery rain, uh, maybe even thunderstorms, to uh, the south of the country. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. So we're close to average at the moment. We're going to go a bit warmer than average over the next couple of days. And then we drop down a little bit towards the end of the week. Into the weekend and next week, temperatures are lifting up to be above average. So from an upper air temperature perspective, it looks like things are warming up. We probably will notice that on the ground to some degree, but again, if we have lots of crowd and heavy showers and longer spells of rain moving up from the south, then uh, we wouldn't necessarily feel that increase in the upper air temperature, except possibly through uh, humidity. Precipitation wise, so loads of dry weather until the middle part of the month. It's from around Friday onwards that we start to get some rainfall spikes coming through, and then they're increasing into the weekend and through to next week as well. So it still looks like got this idea, but it's turn, turning more and settled from the south from around Friday and the weekend onwards before that, mainly dry. Temperature anomalies from the 13th to the 21st of May. Overall, close to average. Northern parts are actually looking a little bit milder than average. Parts of southern 
you, uh, some in England, some parts of the UK, still just a little bit on the cooler than average side. Most parts of Europe are still looking quite cold as well, although Scandinavia is warming up. Uh, it's not a big deviation for us either way, so they're close to average, really, I think, with, te with temperature anomalies from the 13th to the 21st of May. Precipitation only is largely drier than average. Any precipitation is going to start around Friday into the weekend. So we've got several days of dry weather to come. Most places looking drier than average from the 13th to the 21st of May. This is how the very latest GFS 6 o'clock operational run is looking. So high pressure is in over Scandinavia on uh, Thursday. We're bringing a slightly cooler northeasterly wind, but it's going to be mainly dry, I would have thought, on uh, Thursday. On Friday, uh, pressure is lowering to ourselves. That could be allowing some showers to break out across southern and southeastern parts of the country. More notably is that east to northeastern wind, which will probably feed in a fair amount of cloud. So you'll probably notice a slightly cooler feel to the air by the end of the week and rather more of a cloud too. Then this low pressure is trough is starting to move up from the south. So again, that could be bringing some heavy showers as we go through into the weekend. Looks prob like, it, like it's probably mostly restricted to England and Wales. Further north, we are closer to this blocking area of high pressure. So Scotland could keep a lot of dry weather going into the weekend. And then into next week, we keep these very sort of complex weather patterns going. It's a rather... Um, a rather flabby sort of pattern that's setting up for the early part of next week. We actually call this a call where we're neither under high pressure or low pressure. Uh, so you can get any sort of weather type within a call. I suspect that would still be rather showery particularly for southern, southeastern parts of the country. As we move up towards day 10, this area of low pressure starts to come in from off the Atlantic. We're going up towards the Bank Holiday weekend, of course. This is Thursday, 23rd of May, uh, day 10. Low pressure starting to move in from off the Atlantic, bringing uh, general outbreaks of rain in from the west uh, this time. And then over or into and uh, over the Bank Holiday weekend, uh, this GFS run wants to set up high pressure out to our west, turn winding to the north. So this will be a very cool uh, late spring Bank Holiday weekend, probably with showers in northern and eastern parts of the country, southern west areas mainly dry, I would have thought. That's how we finish up with this GFS run to uh, Wednesday the 29th of May. Overall, still looking rather cool, and certainly for the south, anyway, it could still be rather showery, uh, actually. So, um, it looks like it's rather cool end to May on that particular GFS run. The GFS parallel run, and uh, the parallel run will become the operational GFS uh, next month, I believe. So, very shortly, we will start having to run the operational and parallel GFS runs uh, together with one another, and this will become the main operational uh, GFS. But this is how the parallel run is looking today, first, um, today for Thursday. So uh, again, we're in most easterly winds on uh, Thursday, mainly dry. Uh, but tying it through to Friday, the easterly to northeast wind is freshing a little bit, and that uh, the lowering of pressure in the south could bring a few showers into the south and southeast over the weekend. Looks like low pressure is threatened to our south, but any shower risk with this is probably mainly restricted to some of the southeastern parts of the country. Many places could actually stay dry on the evolution of the parallel GFS run. So that's why it's so complex at this end of the week, weekend and early next week period. Uh, into next week, so uh, we tried to get a little bit of a ridge building from the Azores High. I haven't seen much influence from the Azores High for quite some time, but there, there is the Azores High, that 1,025 millibar area of high pressure. Uh, just there, that's the Azores High, that's the high pressure that gave us such a hot summer last summer. Uh, this at moment, this year is looking rather weakened, I have to say, compared to how it was looking at this point uh, last year. But it is still early days. We may see a strengthening of the Azores high as we get further towards the summer. But anyway, at day 10, the parallel GFS is trying to throw up a ridge from the uh, Azores high. But it doesn't really come to much. Actually, low pressure just rolls in from off the Atlantic in the extended range with the parallel GFS, so looking rather cool, rather unsettled again as we go into this late spring bank holiday weekend with showers and pretty cool north to northwesterly winds. That's how we finish up with the parallel uh, GFS run on Thursday, 28th of the... Uh, I see, just flip it over. That's how we finish up with the parallel GFS run on Wednesday, the 29th of May. And uh, still rather unsettled, low pressure, still trying to come in 
from off the Atlantic. Again, you'll notice the Azores High is uh, out to the west of Portugal. Looking, I have to say, a little bit weakened compared to how it was at this point last year when it was very ridgy. It's constantly trying to throw up ridges uh, into not just the UK, but most of northern Europe. This year it looks rather weakened and uh, and not wanting to ridge uh, as much. But as I say, it's early days. It may be as yet to the summer the Azores High will strengthen. All of our hottest and driest summers have a big influence from the Azores High. You can't really, I don't think, have a hot northern European uh, summer without uh, a strong as reach from the Azores high. So that's always an important player. Of course, the same is true in winter. Uh, you can't have a cold winter, really, when the Azores high is strong. You need the Azores high to move over to Bermuda in the winter to allow high pressure to set up over Scandinavia or Greenland um, if you want a cold northern European uh, winter. So the Azores High is always a very, very important player, summer or winter. The moment it's looking a little bit weakened, the Azores High, compared to how it was looking at this point last year when we was beginning to set up the pattern for the hot summer. But it is early days on that. Finally, or not finally, but finally for these weather charts, uh, we've got the ECMWF. Again, the high pressure over Scandinavia on Thursday, bringing in the easterly winds. And uh, low pressure then trundling up from the south, that could well be threatening showers, if not perhaps some longer spells of thunder rain into south and southeast over the weekend. Uh, that low pressure then starts to move over towards Germany early next week, uh, and we have all this high pressure sitting to our north and also to the west too. Heading up towards day 10, that's how we're looking. So we're under a weakened or, or quite a weak ridge there over the uh, country. But low pressure is in the Atlantic. It looks like this low pressure is heading into the UK. However, I think the ECDF is a slightly, uh, a slightly um, uh, more anti-cyclonic solution compared to uh, the GFS. You'll notice again the Azores High is kind of pulled away from us here at day 10. And it's sitting in uh, that sort of area Again, quite a long way away from seemingly not wanting to uh, to ridge at this point. These are the options that we've got on the table within the ECM Ensembles uh, today for uh, for day 10, which is uh, 23rd of May. This will be Icelandic Met Office, of course. So we've got 25 members of the ECM Ensembles, nearly half of them going for high pressure to our north and extending through uh, the UK with low pressure out to the west. So that's still quite a settled scenario. We'll probably be bringing in the wind from a north east direction, so it's not a particularly uh, warm scenario, but it is high pressure dominated there will be plenty of dry weather on offer with that uh, then there's 18 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure sitting to the north of the UK um, and a little bit of low pressure over France. This includes the control and operational ECM runs. They're bringing in quite cool east or northeast winds. But again, it's a fairly dry solution, except maybe down in the south where a few showers could be threatening. And then there's a minority option, just eight, that has, again, strong northern blocking, high pressure around Greenland to the north of Iceland. But these uh, eight are bringing in low pressure from off the Atlantic uh, with this uh, deep trough just here. So obviously that's a much more unsettled solution. Low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean being showers, if not longer spells of rain. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we got taking us towards the end of the month now. This gets us to the 28th of May. So you've got 20 members of the uh, ECM ensembles with high pressure out to our west they'd be feeding in north northwest winds so quite cool but mainly dry uh, with those 18 have high pressure out to our northwest so around greenland and iceland the trough is in over scandinavia they're bringing in cool uh, north northeasterly type winds um but again fairly dry the atlantic is blocked off then there's eight that just have a trough of low pressure over the top of the country. So obviously they're the most unsettled solution with a ridge up towards Greenland. They're a very unsettled solution as a trough in the 500 millibar flow. But again, only eight of those do that, so that's a minority option. And then there's five that uh, have uh, high pressure around Greenland, low pressure over towards Scandinavia. But they are also showing a ridge of high pressure over France. 
Uh, so real mess with those, probably bringing up some pretty warmish air though from the south or southwest. It looks as though high pressure will remain uh, an important um, player through to the end of May, but all the time generally sitting to the west northwest of us. So the signals aren't particularly warm with this, uh, but possibly not too unsettled. Finally, just having a look at the CFSV2. So these are 500 millibar heights. Break it down into weekly pairs. The first week pair takes us from the 13th to the 19th of May. The coming week, we'll have high pressure over and to the north of the country. And we'll be bringing in east or northeast winds. So quite a lot of dry weather, but not overly warm. Then we go through to week two, which is the 20th to 26th of May. High pressure is uh, stretched out from Scandinavia over towards Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure is out to our south southwest. So that could be threatening some heavy showers, uh, particularly to southern and southwestern parts of the country, further north and northeast. Close to that high pressure, probably staying mainly dry. Uh, week 3 is the 27th of May to the 2nd of June, with high pressure then just out to the west of the country. So quite a bit of dry weather, but again, the wind is probably from a north northwesterly direction uh, this time. And then we go through to week 4, which is the 3rd to the 9th of May, the high pressure uh, somewhere between Scotland and Iceland. So again, quite a lot of dry weather. It is looking like high pressure is going to be influential through the next four weeks, but never particularly in a in a position to bring um, anything overly warm. All the time, it looks like winds either come from kind of like a northerly direction, be that sort of uh, northeast or northwest or or north. It doesn't look as though there's any particularly warm uh, positions involved with this high pressure. It looks like it's constantly to the north or to the northwest country. To get real warmth, you need the high pressure to be sort of to the south and to the east of us to drag up the winds from a southerly direction. So, yes, I think there'll be a lot of dry weather in the next four weeks, but uh, I wouldn't expect anything particularly warm uh, to be coming along, except other than in the fact that... Uh, the sun is so strong at this time of year when it's out it will feel warm um but we're not talking about any particular heat waves at the moment finally if you're enjoying the video content at gas at the moment please consider becoming a patron uh for gas we've got 60 patrons so far hello and big thank you to all of our 60 patrons if you'd like to become a patron uh for gas and helps uh, help pay for the website help support uh the content then all you need to do is uh, come to uh the gas patron page sign up for a patron account and you can give an ongoing monthly donation to gas via uh patreon but i do make you become a patron for gas events and uh, you'll get a mention in video to say thank you very much for doing that by the way if you are a patron do keep an eye on the page because uh, i keep it updated uh, at least uh, uh, once a week or so i'll uh, put an updating just going over the videos and the uh, updates that we're doing at uh, gasworthy so you can keep up to date with the content that we're releasing uh, at uh, at this page on um, Patreon. So it's always worth having a little look and a little read at that. Uh, there's also uh, PayPal. So if you'd like to become a PayPal donor, then all you need to do is come to Gazwebis PayPal page. You um, can then send a one-off donation to Gazwebis. You'll get a mention in videos. And we'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. So a big thank you to all of our patrons and donors uh, for uh, Gazwebis. You're helping us to pay for the website and uh, to be able to do all of this what we're uh, what we're doing for you so uh, i hope you're enjoying the content and a uh, big thank you to all of those patrons for doing that right that rounds it up for today only one video today but we'll have two coming up tomorrow east century a 30 day look at actually three tomorrow east century a 30 day look ahead uh a week to 10 day video update and we'll have our second update for the late uh, spring bank holiday weekend we started those late spring bank holiday weekend updates yesterday of course right that's it for now though enjoy the rest of today the sunshine is going to be a nice afternoon so uh, do enjoy it that's all for now and thanks for watching